His name's Jackson Emery. He's the all-time steals leader. Thou shalt at BYU. He's on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Jackson, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, man. Jerem, Jason, it's good to be back, guys. It's been a little while, so uh, I've seen you guys on Twitter and watched the show, so it's good to join you guys and talk a little bit. Well, let's get your opinion on some things. Uh, randomly, well, maybe not randomly, BYU's lost four in a row in Malibu, which is super weird. It's almost as weird as BYU having won three in Spokane uh, in a row. So <laughs> what do you expect tonight in uh, as BYU tries to snap this streak? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's extremely surprising to me because I, I thought I knew they had lost, you know, a couple times, but I didn't realize it was four times in a row or three times in a row. Right. And, um, it, it is a tough place to play in regards to, I guess maybe it's just the Malibu beach or maybe the lifestyle. It kind of like lulls you to sleep a little bit. Right. But, um, I honestly, I'm not too concerned about this game. Pepperdine's not a very good team. I mean, one and thirteen in conference play, four and twenty-two on the year. They they have really taken a step back. I, I felt like the last two years they were a little more talented and had more dangerous scores. But uh, as long as we go in and play hard. Um, I think that just with talent and effort alone, we should be able to beat these guys. You know, one of the questions that we've talked about, Jackson, throughout this whole season is BYU being improved. Are they an improved team? You know, if you're going to just look at records, I mean, I guess you're, there's, that's gonna, you're going to have an opinion one way, but I still believe this is an improved BYU team. Is BYU improved this season in your opinion? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting discussion, right? And a lot of people have, you know, said they are improved. A lot of people said they have improved. They're the same team. Um, I think they've improved in certain areas as in uh, defensively. I feel like they're more locked in. I feel like they're tied into, you know, the defensive scheme that uh, Coach Troyer and Coach Rose have, you know, implemented. I, I feel like they value possessions a little more. Um, but I do feel like uh, – at the end of the day, they haven't improved in trying to get other guys involved. You know, it's one thing that, you know, especially when I played that we were really good at is, you know, our fourth and fifth, our third, fourth and fifth scoring options, right? And getting a variety of guys involved, whether it was myself or Jonathan Tavernari or Brandon Davies or Kyle Collinsworth or Tyler Haas. I mean, all fantastic players. But those are the guys that really made the teams, right? We always had the league camards as seniors or the, you know, Jimmers or, you know, myself. But the guys that really got us going were those individuals as well as guys like Noah Hartsock, right? So to me, offensively, they got to figure out how to get that third, fourth, and fifth scoring option going. And thankfully, TJ's really clicked these last few games. But the Zach Sellies is the Dalton Nixons. We got to get those guys' confidence up. We got to get them shots. We need to get them going in order to make this team go. And then lastly, you know, for me, I'm a results-driven guy, right? To me, it's, you know, I have several goals when I go into the season. I want to win conference. I want to win the, turn, you know, the conference tournament. And then I want to go to the NCAA tournament in advance. And to me, if you haven't done those things, there's, there really isn't much improvement. Maybe we're closer to it, but to me, those are the key indicators, in my opinion, if a team really has advanced and really has improved. Yeah, it's interesting. It's the means versus the end, right? The end right now is not improved. BYU's lost two games to non-St. Zaga. BYU's own three versus St. Zaga. BYU has a nice overall record. Uh, in, in league, five losses, likely going to have probably six, hopefully not, but... Um, do you like the means or the end more? The means are that BYU is losing by fewer points in some of these games. Uh, do we just like that more? Do we just like that more? The, the margin of loss was less. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I think, uh, I mean, last year, a lot of things that drove people crazy was, you know, first, the amount of talent that was on the roster, right? But I think, B, that because those guys had a lot of freedom to play, they made a lot of bad mistakes at times, right? Just, you know, they – jacked up shots early in the shot clock. They uh, threw erroneous passes that really around the back or behind their head or did things that drive anyone crazy, right? Because it's not uh, disciplined basketball. Um, and I think what they've done this year with this team, they need to do last year with last year's team, right? In terms of setting some discipline, setting some boundaries, letting them play within those boundaries, and then slowly loosening up and letting those guys play more within their comfort zone. And I feel like 
this year, that really affected TJ. And uh, TJ was just trying to figure out how to play within a system, slow down. I think he's become more comfortable, but it took him 15 or so games to really get in his own where he knows what his role is, how to play within a slower style of basketball, which he's never played in his entire life. One question I would ask, and uh, we, we were hoping that BYU would challenge St. Mary's and Gonzaga a little more this year. Should they be, though? Gonzaga's 23-4, and four, ranked ninth. St. Mary's 24-3, and three, ranked 15th. Do we think that BYU is going to be a top 25 team with no seniors? Like, it, of all the seasons in the WCC, this is the one where I go, you know what, third place, third place is where we're going to be. We just want a better overall record. <laughs> I think every year, right? I mean, you look at last year, Gonzaga was a top five team and St. Mary's was a top 20 team, in my opinion. So every year, those teams are going to be really good. Every year, um, you're going to have to play a high quality of basketball to beat those teams. And, and one thing, let's, you know, let's look back on the previous games, right? I mean, BYU's one shot away from beating St. Mary's at home. I think if you do that, it's a whole different season, right? Yeah. It's a whole different conference play in regards to their confidence, in regards to, you know, the standings. And then you they go to Spokane, and uh, they're tied with a couple minutes left to play. And they go to St. Mary's. I felt like it was never really – I mean, it was four, five, six, eight points, but that game probably wasn't as close as, you know, those other two games that they played. But, I mean, they're right there. And the difference is is they just lost. They didn't win those games, right? And so, to me, they can – uh, compete with those teams. I feel like they can beat those teams. It's just a matter of executing 40 minutes of basketball, and there's probably five or six minutes in there where they don't do that as effectively. What for you, at least, and, and especially as a former player, I'm really curious about this, your opinion on, on what constitutes a successful season. Like, what would be success for this team this year? Yeah, right. I think in a lot of areas they've overachieved, right? They lost uh, Eric Mika. Um, my brother obviously didn't play this year. So when you lose two key contributors like that, experienced guys, and you get a bunch of new guys coming off their mission or JC transfers, I mean, that's a brand new team again. You can even consider Elijah playing this year as brand new because of how injured he's been and how much, how little he played last year. So when you put in all those key components, it's been really impressive to see what they've done, what they did in state and beating everyone here, what they've done out of state, uh, and then being competitive in the West Coast Conference. Um, but to me, once again, you know, I'd love to see them, you know, knock off Gonzaga the last game of the year. I'd like to see them hopefully get to the championship game in the West Coast Conference tournament, and uh, you know, at the very least, you know, advance in the postseason play, whether it be the NCAA tournament or NIT, right? And th those are key things that I look at to see, are they taking a step forward, or is this just the same third-place BYU Cougar team, can't compete with St. Mary's and Gonzaga, lose in the semifinals, make it to the NIT, get beat early. I mean, those are the key things that I'm going to be looking at in these last few weeks. Let's finish with this, Jackson. How's Nick doing? He's doing great. You know, it's it was a tough situation he had to go through, right? And such a when you when you know people that have gone through these private matters, uh, it affects their life dramatically. And when it's been made so public and putting him in the spotlight with some of the you know personal issues he's faced with anxiety and depression, as well as going through a divorce, uh, there's a lot to take on, especially as a 22, 23 year old kid. And he's handled it extremely well. He's in a great spot. He's working out. He's getting his body and his mind right, getting ready for next year. And that's all you can ask of him, right? And you know, at times it was just getting through that day and getting to the next day. Uh, but I feel like we're finally past the the day-to-day -day barrier and looking at next week and next month. And those are the things that are really allowing him to, you know, progress forward, build relationships, and do those things that will make him a better person as well as a better, better basketball player. Well, that's great to hear. We appreciate uh, you telling the, us that. And uh, great insight and opinion on uh, those topics. Jackson, we appreciate the time, man. Yeah? Yeah, no, I look forward to these guys. They they fight hard every night. It's fun to watch them. I hope they end the season on a high note. I know it's tough when you know you can't win the conference, so hopefully they, they're playing for postseason play and keep that competitiveness going, and hopefully uh, they get ready to make a postseason run. Okay, thanks, Jackson. Appreciate it.
Thanks, guys. Have a good one. You too.